What's up, yo? How you doing? Well, I hope you're all staying safe during these crazy times. I have gotten to spend so much time at home these past couple months. And one of the things that I love to do is obviously collect, but I'm a very organized collector. I'm like an organized hoarder. And I recently, uh, my vinyl, my new vinyl collection has spilled out all over my library here. So I had to recently buy a new uh, cabinet and I posted a video of me putting it together and everybody was like, show off your collection, show off your vinyl collection. So I figured, you know what, let's start a, a fun little YouTube series where I can go through my vinyl collection. So here's the catch. I'm gonna go through, I have uh, two cabinets here, each with four rows each. So I'll do a total of eight rows over the course of this series. Uh, so we'll start today with row one, which is A through B. <laughs> first row is just the first two letters. Um, the thing you should know about these vinyls, these are my new vinyls. These are reissues, things that have been reissued. So these are nice, clean, fresh new copies that came out like in the past decade or so. I still have over there hundreds and hundreds of my old original vinyls from the 60s and 70s. But for, for this series, I'm just gonna do the, the stuff that I re-bought in the, the, the vinyl resurgence age. So here we go, without any further ado, because there's a lot to go through. Here we go. First, first record here is the Virgin Suicides soundtrack by Air. This, first of all, this movie, Virgin Suicides, I love this movie, Sofia Coppola's first film. And the soundtrack, is all by this French band Air, and everything about this soundtrack is just so, it's very Pink Floyd, very moody, uh, and this is one of those movies where the soundtrack really carries the film, you know, the way Cat Stevens' music carried Harold and Maud, or Amy Mann's music carol, uh, carried Magnolia. This is an amazing soundtrack. And there's also a Virgin Suicide soundtrack with all the songs from the 70s that was used in the movies. Uh, Everything from Styx to the Hollies to the Bee Gees, even some Sloan songs, modern day stuff. So anyway, great, great soundtrack. One of my favorites. Next thing here, the next two are uh, a band called Agent Fresco, which are kind of like a new agey kind of prog band in the vein of like maybe Riverside or Porcupine Tree. Really, really cool stuff. And I was gifted these actually, so thank you. Uh, next here is Alcatraz Live in Japan. This was uh, when Ingve was still in the band, and I was a huge fan of the first two Alcatraz albums. First one with Ingve, second one with Steve Vai. But this, this was live in Japan in 84. I had this concert on VHS, and I remember myself, John Petrucci, John Myung, and my roommates at Berkeley, we would watch my homemade VHS of this concert over and over and over. We, we wore it out. And... This is a great, great concert because it was one of Alca Alcatraz's last ones. And um, it has uh, obviously um, the Alcatraz tunes, but there's also some rainbow tunes uh, and stuff that Graham Bonnet did elsewhere. So that's a cool collection. This is something I got this. Uh, I think Charlie Benante sent me this because I'm a collector. This is the first Anthrax album along with the Armed and Dangerous EP. And it's a really cool uh I don't know what you would call this, but look at these early photos of the guys. My God, the original lineup uh, with Neil Turbin and uh, I guess Danny Lilker and stuff. Amazing. So this was, and I was a, an Anthrax fan back then. I saw Anthrax on the Armed and Dangerous tour right around here, right when Joey first joined the band. And look at Scott. Scott looks like Mark, Rat Mark Ratner from Fast Times. Uh, anyway, I'm a, I go way back with these guys. Obviously, they're good friends of mine now, but I was a fan going to see them at L'Amour back in the day, back in these days. And then from the first Anthrax to the latest Anthrax, uh, Charlie sent me this as well. This was their late, latest album, For All Kings. And they're a band that are still just as strong now as they ever were, which is a rarity when you're 35 years into your career. All right, this is one of the greatest hip hop albums of all time, A Tribe Called Quest's Low End Theory. Love this album from start to finish. One of my top five hip hop albums ever. And this has... Uh, the great scenario, which is them and the uh, leaders of the new school doing a, 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 a song together. But from start to finish, some of the best like jazz samples you'll ever hear on a hip hop record. And then here's their follow up, Midnight uh, Marauders. Love the cover with all the 
different uh, hip hop legends on the front. There's this Ice T and a couple of De La Soul guys, and uh, who else on there? Beastie Boys is Ad Rock and MCA. Great, great cover. And then their latest album from a few years ago. This was the last album they did with Fife Dog. Um, it was great to get something from them before before he passed or right after he passed. Um, Arch Rathaos. And uh, the thing that I love most about this is not only it has this great album, but it has a bonus disc of the Twist of Fate EP that I did with John Arch, which was just two songs, each of which were well over 12 minutes. One was 12, one was 15. So this was me, Jim Mateos, John Arch, and uh, Joey Vera on bass. But in addition, in addition to the bonus Twist of Fate EP, you get uh, the whole album of uh, the... The last one that they made together, which was great. Bobby Jarzombek on drums, amazing drummer. Here's uh, here's the first one in the pile that has... Oh, no, wait. I was just talking about one with me. So here's another one with me. This is uh, the Avenged Sinful Nightmare album. Uh, very, very proud of this album. Uh, the, you know, the history of when it, what went into the making of the record is well documented. Um, it was a very, very emotional album for the guys. And I was honored to come in and bring the Revs drum parts to life. Um... What happened was they he had demoed all the songs of himself playing everything on an electronic drum kit. So uh, my job was basically to bring whatever he did on those demos to life, you know, all the grooves and the, you know, the phrasings and stuff. But they gave me some room to do my own sprinkles. A lot of, you know, the bell ride thing in Nightmare is a good example or uh, the intro from Welcome to the Family. I just made that up on the spot. So there's a lot of moments of me in there mixed in with what the Rev uh, had intended to uh to do if he had lived so uh, this was a an important album for me and for those guys back to the future soundtrack i think this was a gift from melody or max i'm pretty sure uh one of my favorite films and trilogies of all time and this is just it's always great to collect picture discs uh these ne this next one's a, a weird one sid barrett's first solo album um and it was um well first of all it was produced by david gilmore who obviously replaced sid in pink floyd but uh David Gilmore plays bass on the album. Rick Wright plays keyboards, uh, piano, organ stuff, and Jerry Shirley on drums. So it's almost like the original Floyd, uh, but David Gilmore playing bass and Jerry Shirley on drums. So it's definitely an important part of the Floyd catalog. This is one of the greatest of all time. I actually have another copy of this hanging on the wall signed by Brian Wilson, but here's my, my playing copy. Uh, what, what can I say? It hasn't been said already. I mean, this... This was one of the biggest pioneering albums of the 60s. Uh, if they hadn't made this, the Beatles may not have made Sgt. Pepper and so on and so forth. But groundbreaking production. Brian Wilson, one of uh, the, the pop rock icons and geniuses of all time. Uh, so this is a must for any record collection. These next couple, these next three, are Beardfish. Uh, one of my favorite modern prog bands uh, from Sweden. I took them out on tour with Dream Theater. I took them out on tour with um, uh, the Neil Morse Band. I uh, had them on Progressive Nation of Sea um, uh, Cruise. And anyway, these are a few of their last albums. Love them. They ended up splitting up, but now Ricard plays with Big Big Train, and he's a great, great talent. Okay, here we go. These next three are huge albums for me. This one, starting with this, uh, not only my top hip-hop album of all time, but it's in my top 10 of any genre of all time. Beastie Boys, Paul's Boutique, an absolute masterpiece from start to finish. This, this is the Sgt. Pepper of hip-hop. This was the one that broke every rule, uh, just all broke new ground in sampling, and it was one of the last albums that really got away with this level of sampling because then they changed all the laws. So this is... Uh, I mean, it's got, they sample everything from the Beatles to Public Enemy to the Ramones to Zeppelin to movies. It's just a, a sonic tour de force. And then these are their two follow-ups. These are my two other favorite Beastie Boys albums, Check Your Head and Ill Communication. Love both of these albums so, so much. This is when they started to pick up their instruments and fuse their punk rock uh, background with the hip-hop stuff they were doing and kind of became a real band as well as hip hop guys. Okay, well, you can probably guess what's coming next. This next chunk is my Beatles chunk. So much great stuff. I, where do I begin? I mean, I, I'm actually missing uh, Please Please Me and uh, with the Beatles, surprisingly. I have it in every other format. I have the CDs, stereo, mono, I have the original vinyl, I have the US versions, 
but missing from the reissues, I still have to buy those. So my modern reissues begin with A Hard Day's Night. Uh, I love the songs on this album. This was John, I think. I think John was firing at his best on Hard Day's Night and Help. I mean, you have stuff like, uh, you know, uh, If I Fell, uh, obviously Hard Day's Night. And then here you have, um, yeah, you got to hide your love away and you're going to lose that girl. Ticket to Ride, Help. I mean, this was, I think this was John's greatest era until the psychedelic stuff. Both of these albums are incredible. Beatles for Sale uh, came in between those. And this was, for us in America, this was like, uh, what I knew as Beatles 65 and, um, what else? I guess Beatles 6. When I grew up in America in the late 60s and 70s, it's much, the catalog was much different from the Beatles catalog we know today. As, as of in the 80s, they reissued everything on CD and everything is the English catalog. But I grew up with, uh, you know, Beatles second album, Beatles 65. And this was another one I grew up with, although with a different cover. This is uh, The Beatles Yesterday and Today. No, this is not original Butcher Block. This is a replica, so it's, I don't have an original. J.J. French has two, but he still won't give me one. This is a replica, and um, it's actually on yellow capital vinyl, which is really cool, too. Um, but this was one of the American releases that, you know, this was kind of made up of songs from uh, Revolver, uh, If I Needed Someone. It's kind of like a mix between Revolver and Rubber Soul stuff. And then here we go. Here we into the the, the greats. Rubber Soul. This was uh, this I this was very similar to Pet Sounds. I think in terms of just groundbreaking the songwriting. Their songwriting was just reaching a, a new level. Uh, the harmonies, the production. I love the the percussion all throughout this album. The Shakers and the Tambourines and Ringo's doing so much great stuff like that. Then came this one. I mean. <laughs> you know, you thought this was as crazy as it was going to get. Little did you know it was to come. But when this came out, and there's, there was a great scene in Mad Men. Mad Men, to me, is the ultimate 60s time capsule. But uh, there's a great scene where, uh, I guess it takes place towards the end of 66, and uh, uh, Don Draper's wife comes home with a revolver, and then he drops the needle on the end, the last song, Tomorrow Never Knows, and he's just like, he doesn't get it. And that was the, that's what, that was drew the line in the sand between... The people that were going to be stuck in the 50s and early 60s mentality and the people that were willing to tune in, drop out, you know, turn on, turn off your mind, relax, and float downstream. And this is, Tomorrow Never Knows was the first song recorded for Revolver, which is strange though, but it ends with the album and it ushers in the psychedelic era and then comes the big one. I mean, quite possibly numero uno in my book. Uh, maybe not my favorite Beatles songs in terms of songs, but in terms of production, it, it, it just... It's the it's Sergeant Pepper. It it just changed everything. And the production on this, you listen to this with headphones, it's just mind-boggling what they were doing with four tracks back then. And, and incredible. So here I have the stereo version. Uh, then this is the uh, the remixed version, the Giles Martin remix version, which might be the quintessential mix, I think. Uh, I think, how could you redo the original Sgt. Pepper mix? Well, I think he even improved it because he was able to isolate all the instruments that were bounced down. So it just sounds even crisper and fresher. And uh, I would say if I could only have one version, it would be the Giles Martin uh, 50th anniversary version. And then uh, same thing, uh, the, the Giles Martin remixes on Picture Disc. Magical Mystery Tour, uh, not, uh, wasn't a real... Uh, European release. This was the only one from the Beatle, the American catalog that is now considered part of the, the Universal catalog. And basically this was a collection of singles um, and they put it out with the with the movie and it's got some of the great... I think this goes hand in hand with Sgt. Pepper in terms of covering that era. You know, I Am the Walrus and Strawberry Fields and uh, Penny Lane, Baby You're Rich Man, Blue Jay Way, I mean Magical Mystery Tour. This is the Psychedelic Beatles uh, pretty much coming to an end because once they hit this, once they hit the White Album, everything was very different. The, with the excesses of Pepper and Magical Mystery Tour got stripped down to nothing. <laughs> and just nothing but great, great songs. Songs that they wrote when they were in India on acoustic guitars, demos, just, but, but what a collection. I mean, some of the all-time greatest Beatles songs ever. Some of my favorites, the deep cuts like Happiness is a Warm Gun and Everybody's got something to hide, and uh, your blues, and uh, 
while my guitar gently weeps. I mean, so many great ones on here. But then there's also, you know, Revolution 9, and there's also Wild Honey Pie. So uh, in my opinion, yes, maybe it would have been better as a single album, but I think the range is what makes it so great. Uh, that's the stereo version here. I have uh, the mono version. And speaking of mono Beatles, this is the only Beatles album that was never released in mono. This is, uh, Abbey Road was only re released in stereo. As far as I'm concerned, I think this might be their cleanest polished production. This kind of set the groundwork for what all 70s productions were to become. I think it was the first album recorded on eight tracks. And, and uh, as most of you know, even though this wasn't the last al Beatles album to be released, it was the last Beatles album to be recorded. And, uh, you know, ending with the end, although they even actually, they really ended with Her Majesty, but ending with the end was just a perfect ending. And then came this, which kind of, uh, you know, came out on the heels of their breaking up. And this was recorded before Abbey Road at the beginning of 69. And there's still some great stuff on here. Two of us I love. Cross the Universe, Dig a Pony, I Got a Feeling. To, to me, those are my favorite tracks. I mean, everybody thinks about Get Back, Long and Winding Road, and Let It Be. For me, those are my lesser favorite songs. I like the, the deeper cuts. Cannot wait for the Peter, Japs, Peter Jackson 50th anniversary film to finally come out. I mean, I have all the, the bootleg footage for, for forever now, for decades, but to get a real release. And this is a, a bootleg version of what that album was supposed to become. The originally, it was going to be Get Back. Uh, this was the album cover, which was a, a play off of the Please, Please Please Me cover of their first album. Um, and it, the whole thing got abandoned. But if, if it hasn't been abandoned and then Phil Spector brought in and they make the movie and everything, this is what they intended to put out. So this is a bootleg of that. I know we're getting carried away with Beatles stuff, but we got the Past Masters on vinyl, all the greatest singles. I mean, it's unbelievable how many of their greatest songs weren't on official albums. You know, uh, Revolution, Lady Madonna, Paperback Writer, We Can Work It Out, uh, She's a Woman. I mean, Day Tripper, those weren't even on albums. Is that, is that insane? And then I have the Anthology 1, 2, and 3 on vinyl. Just great, great, great outtakes. They, they, this was so well done. Uh, the soundtracks, the movie, the book. Uh, in, incredible. So I had to have those on vinyl. And then this is a, a great, great addition to the Beatles um, catalog. It's the Love soundtrack, which was very original. Giles Martin came in there and st started doing a lot of mashups and things like that. I think... Like, some of these mashups are brilliant. The, the mashup of Dry My Car, The Word, and What You're Doing, absolutely brilliant. I Want You, She's So Heavy, uh, Helter Skelter, and Benefit of Mr. Kite. I mean, so, so creative. Strawberry Fields and with, oh, no, no, Within Without You and Tomorrow Never Knows. So, really, really uh, brilliant, genius, um, clever, creative application of the Beatles music by... Giles Martin, of course, George Martin's son. Okay, that's it for the Beatles. We're rounding the end of this cabinet. I hope this video is still, hope this is staying with you. This is an amazing album by Beck. Uh, this is called Sea Change. It has one of my favorite songs ever, a song called um, uh, Lonesome Tears. One of the, to me, it's one of the most well-written and orchestrated songs I've ever heard, an all-time favorite. Uh, and then a few years later, he made another album in the similar vein, Morning Phase, and this swept, swept the Grammys and won so many Grammys and deserved it because uh, it's back in his more stripped down kind of Gordon Lightfoot Beatles kind of uh, approach. Here we got uh, these next three. Believe it or not, I'm a huge Bee Gees fan. And this is the original Bee Gees. It's not just Barry, Maurice, and, and Robin. Look, there's five of them. And they started as a pop band in the late 60s, very much in the vein of the Beatles and the Monkees and the Kinks, writing these great, you know, power pop kind of bad finger type songs. And all three of these albums are favorites of mine. Bee Gees first, probably my favorite, but Horizontal has um, Lemons Never Forget, which I covered with Neil and Randy, and Idea is a great album. So really, if you're a fan of power pop or pop, these three first Bee Gees albums are essentials. Then we have uh, kind of like Beardfish earlier. These are uh, some touring buddies of mine, Ben Sinister, and two albums. I took them out. Um, uh, where did they call it? They, they did some shows with Flying Colors and also uh, opened for Big Elf when I went out with Big Elf in Europe. Great, great power pop band. Speaking of pop bands, very much in the vein of Ben Folds Five, another power, more poppy thing. So Ben Sinister, Ben Folds Five, similar veins, piano driven, poppy stuff. 
I'm a huge Ben Folds fan. In fact, I don't have Rocking the Suburbs, and I need to get that on vinyl because that's one of my favorites as well. But this is my favorite Ben Folds 5 album. Uh, more touring buddies between the Buried and Me. Uh, this is the only one of theirs I have on vinyl. I obviously have everything in my iTunes uh, uh, library, and I have all the CDs. But this is the only one I have on vinyl. But I love everything they do. To me, they are uh, one of the best of modern-day prog metal shredders. And I love them. And once again, more touring buddies. Big Elf. Uh, this is this is my top 11 albums of all time. This barely cracks the top 10, but this is sitting in my all-time list from every band, every genre. This is right on the outskirts at number 11. This is the Cheat to Gallows album. Fell, I fell in love with these guys when I heard this. It was like, uh, you know, it was like when I heard Jellyfish the first time. It's like, oh my God, it's all my favorite bands wrapped in one. It's Pink Floyd and the Beatles and Black Sabbath and King Crimson. And it was all in there. And I fell in love with them, took them under my wing, took them out with Dream Theater throughout South America, throughout uh, Europe, throughout America. And then I ended up playing in the band on this album, the follow-up album, Into the Maelstrom. They were pretty much breaking up and I convinced Damon to hang in there and make another record. And he said, okay, but only if you play drums on it. So I played drums on this album. It was an honor for me. I love this band dearly. I love this album. Uh, and I did this tour with them, or some of this tour with them, and I just love them, and I love Damon. Uh, he plays with the Colt now, but I would love to hopefully hear some more Big L from him in the future. And we're almost at the end here. Here we have uh, Black Keys. I'm not the biggest fan of theirs, but I really like this album, and anytime I like an album uh, enough, I'll pick it up on vinyl. And then here we are. We're at the almost the back of this first row, and we hit the Sabbath collection. Uh, I'm missing Paranoid, believe it or not. But if you, other than Paranoid, these are the first five out of the first six albums. And if, as far as I'm concerned, those first six albums are masterpieces. I, need, I do need to get Paranoid. And I, uh, I covered this with Metal Allegiance, and I covered this with Metal Allegiance. Uh, I don't have copies of that. <laughs> I need, Mark Mengi, I need copies of us doing these albums, because that was a great experience playing both of these albums, you know, getting into Bill Ward's head and doing that. And then the last album back here, the Boogie Nights soundtrack, one of my favorite movies of all time, quite possibly number one, uh, with such a soundtrack. I mean, the, the greatest 70s soundtrack. I, I would say that the greatest 70s soundtracks would be Boogie Nights and Dazed and Confused, I would say. But anyway, huge fan of this movie, huge fan of this album, has all the classics from the 70s, and there's a second volume as well. Anyway, there you go. All that time, all that talking, all that music, and we only went through the first two letters of the alphabet. <laughs> and as you can see, we're still in B when we get to the second pile. So uh, I'm going to take a little break. Enjoy this first, uh, this first volume. And uh, I guess there'll be a lot more to come. I got seven more rows here. So we'll get around to them in the uh, weeks and months to come. I hope you enjoyed this first installment. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Take care. Stay safe. And keep listening.